twenty-eighth day of abide in christ by andrew murray this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by christopher smith as your strength all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth matthew twenty eight eighteen footnote the word power in this verse is properly authority revised version but the two ideas are so closely linked and the authority as a living divine reality is so inseparable from the power that i have felt at liberty to retain the word power be strong in the lord and in the power of his might ephesians chapter six verse ten my power is made perfect in weakness second corinthians chapter twelve verse nine revised version there is no truth more generally admitted among earnest christians than that of their utter weakness there is no truth more generally misunderstood and abused here as elsewhere god's thoughts are heaven high above man's thoughts the christian often tries to forget his weakness god wants us to remember it to feel it deeply the christian wants to conquer his weakness and to be freed from it god wants us to rest and even rejoice in it the christian mourns over his weakness christ teaches his servant to say i take pleasure in infirmities most gladly will i glory in my infirmities the christian thinks his weakness his greatest hindrance in the life and service of god god tells us that it is the secret of strength and success it is our weakness heartily accepted and continually realized that gives us our claim and access to the strength of him who has said my strength is made perfect in weakness when our lord was about to take his seat upon the throne one of his last words was all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth just as his taking his place at the right hand of the power of god was something new and true a real advance in the history of the god-man so was this clothing with all power omnipotence was now entrusted to the man christ jesus that from henceforth through the channels of human nature it might put forth its mighty energies hence he connected with this revelation of what he was to receive the promise of the share that his disciples would have in it when i am ascended ye shall receive power from on high luke twenty four forty nine acts one eight it is in the power of the omnipotent saviour that the believer must find his strength for life and for work it was thus with the disciples during ten days they worshipped and waited at the footstool of his throne they gave expression to their faith in him as their saviour to their adoration of him as their lord to their love to him as their friend to their devotion and readiness to work for him as their master jesus christ was the one object of thought of love of delight in such worship of faith and devotion their souls grew up into intensest communion with him upon the throne and when they were prepared the baptism of power came it was power within and power around the power came to qualify for the work to which they had yielded themselves of testifying by life and word to their unseen lord with some the chief testimony was to be that of a holy life revealing the heaven and the christ from whom it came the power came to set up the kingdom within them to give them the victory over sin and self to fit them by living experience to testify to the power of jesus on the throne to make men live in the world as saints others were to give themselves up entirely to the speaking in the name of jesus but all needed and all received the gift of power to prove that now jesus had received the kingdom of the father all power in heaven and earth was indeed given to him and by him imparted to his people just as they needed it whether for a holy life or effective service they received the gift of power to prove to the world that the kingdom of god to which they professed to belong was not in word but in power by having power within they had power without and around the power of god was felt even by those who would not yield themselves to it acts two forty three four thirteen 
513. And what Jesus was to these first disciples, he is to us too. Our whole life and calling as disciples find their origin and their guarantee in the words, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. What he does in and through us, he does with almighty power. What he claims or demands, he works himself by that same power. All he gives, he gives with power. Every blessing he bestows, every promise he fulfills, every grace he works, all, all is to be with power. Everything that comes from this Jesus on the throne of power is to bear the stamp of power. The weakest believer may be confident that in asking to be kept from sin, to grow in holiness, to bring forth much fruit, he may count upon these his petitions being fulfilled with divine power. The power is in Jesus. Jesus is ours with all his fullness. It is in us, his members, that the power is to work and be made manifest. And if we want to know how the power is bestowed, the answer is simple. Christ gives his power in us by giving his life in us. He does not, as so many believers imagine, take the feeble life he finds in them and impart a little strength to aid them in their feeble efforts. No, it is in giving his own life in us that he gives us his power. The Holy Spirit came down to the disciples direct from the heart of their exalted Lord, bringing down into them the glorious life of heaven into which he had entered. And so his people are still taught to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When he strengthens them, it is not by taking away the sense of feebleness and giving in its place the feeling of strength. By no means. But in a very wonderful way, leaving and ever increasing the sense of utter impotence, he gives them along with it the consciousness of strength in him. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The feebleness and the strength are side by side. As the one grows, the other too, until they understand the saying, When I am weak, then am I strong. I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest on me. The believing believer learns to look upon Christ on the throne, Christ the Omnipotent, as his life. He studies that life in its infinite perfection and purity, in its strength and glory. It is the eternal life dwelling in a glorified man. And when he thinks of his own inner life and longs for holiness, to live well-pleasing unto God, or for power to do the Father's work, he looks up, and, rejoicing that Christ is his life, he confidently reckons that that life will work mightily in him all he needs. In things little and things great, in the being kept from sin from moment to moment for which he has learned to look, or in the struggle with some special difficulty or temptation, the power of Christ is the measure of his expectation. He lives a most joyous and blessed life, not because he is no longer feeble, but because, being utterly helpless, he consents and expects to have the mighty Saviour work in him. The lessons these thoughts teach us for practical life are simple but very precious. The first is that all our strength is in Christ, laid up and waiting for use. It is there as an almighty life which is in him for us, ready to flow in according to the measure in which it finds the channels open. But whether its flow is strong or feeble, whatever our experience of it be, there it is in Christ. All power in heaven and earth. Let us take time to study this. Let us get our minds filled with the thought that Jesus might be to us a perfect Saviour, the Father gave him all power. That is the qualification that fits him for our needs. All the power of heaven over all the powers of earth, over every power of earth in our heart and life too. The second lesson is, this power flows into us as we abide in close union with him. When the union is feeble, little valued or cultivated, the inflow of strength will be feeble. When the union with Christ is rejoiced in as our highest good, and everything sacrificed for the sake of maintaining it, the power will work. His strength will be made perfect in our weakness. 
our one care must therefore be to abide in christ as our strength our one duty is to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might let our faith cultivate large and clear apprehensions of the exceeding greatness of god's power in them that believe even that power of the risen and exalted christ by which he triumphed over every enemy ephesians one nineteen to twenty one let our faith consent to god's wonderful and most blessed arrangement nothing but feebleness in us as our own all the power in christ and yet within our reach as surely as if it were in us let our faith daily go out of self and its life into the life of christ placing our whole being at his disposal for him to work in us let our faith above all confidently rejoice in the assurance that he will in very deed with his almighty power perfect his work in us as we thus abide in christ the holy spirit the spirit of his power will work mightily in us and we too shall sing jehovah is my strength and song in jehovah i have righteousness and strength i can do all things through christ which strengtheneth me End of 28th day.